I want to start this video out by asking this. Do people realize what is happening right now? The stock market is being crippled by a liquidity crisis. And this stock market and this economy is going to have a very, very difficult time as liquidity dries up. Dow Jones today down another 280 points. NASDAQ was down 67. The real concerning thing here, I believe, was the 10-year bond yield. As I make this video, markets are closed. 10-year bond yield sitting at 3.19%. The two-year sitting at 3.49%. I think the two-year uh, was right at 3.5%. It's sitting right at about 3.5% right now. And I think that's the highest it's been for a very, very long time, maybe uh, going back to 2007. Uh, there's a few uh, things I think we need to talk about today, but comment down below. What do you think uh, is happening right now as we watch the 10-year bond yield sitting at 3.19%, a sell-off in bonds, Comment down below, why do you think this is happening? What is this indicating to all of us? We'd love to know your thoughts. I want to start with this article on CNBC today. Private payrolls grew by just 132,000 in August. ADP says in reworked jobs report. A deceleration from the 268,000 jobs gain in July, sitting at 132 in August. Now the Dow Jones... Uh, estimate for the ADP count was 300,000. That's what they were expecting for the month of August. We got 132. And the only reason we got that, and thank God, thank God we have all these uh, waitering jobs, bartending jobs, uh, baristo jobs in the service sector, because this added 110,000 of those 132,000 jobs. The rest of it was warehouse and truckers. So thank God for waiters and bartenders, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody please tell me how in the world we are going to remain a first world nation when we are relying on the service sector, waitering jobs, uh, bartendering jobs, baristo jobs, all these service sector jobs. This is not going to support a real estate market. It is not going to support a first world economy. Uh, it's unbelievable uh, what is happening. How about this? Snap will lay off 20% of its staff. This also on CNBC today. I think the markets probably should have went down a lot more. Bed Bath & Beyond announces store closures. 150 stores closing. They're going to cut about 20% of its corporate and supply chain workforce. Uh, earlier today, I checked uh, their stock. It was down 21%. It is down over 37% year to date. This is what's really happening. And as liquidity dries up, as it's going to get more expensive for uh, corporations and businesses to borrow money, we're going to see uh, companies having to cut the fat, uh, having to shrink having to lay people off. This is uh, about to get real, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, another article on CNBC, Fed's Mester sees benchmark rate above 4% and no cuts at least through 2023. Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester sees benchmark interest rates rising above 4% by early next year. She said she also sees the slowing of the economy slowing growth, not a good sign. And at some point, uh, I, I think we're going to have to start believing what they're saying here, because I don't think there's going to be a pivot. As you know, over the last six, seven months, uh, I, I didn't believe that there would be a pivot. I believe they're about to get very, very aggressive here. Feds Williams pushes back on market expectations of a rate cut next year. This also on CNBC. This is the New York Fed president, John Williams, saying that he expects interest rates to continue higher and remain at these levels until inflation is subdued. Uh, 
I think we got to begin to pay attention to what they are saying because I think they're going to follow through with this, ladies and gentlemen. I really do. And I know there's a lot of people that are hopeful of this pivot. They want this stock market to bounce back. Uh, they, they, they want the housing market to bounce back. But this was all artificial to begin with. And uh, the Fed has caused huge, huge problems here. And now they're going to have to do something to fix it, if they can even fix it at this point. We know that that energy and, and, and food is out of their control. But no matter what, they're going to raise interest rates again in September and to the end of the year. And it looks like they're going to continue to raise rates throughout 2023. Used car market cools as prices plunge to one year low. This on the hedge. I think we're going to see deflation in multiple areas of this economy, in RVs, in autos, in housing, in land, boats, uh, the luxury watch market. We're going to see, this is going to be interesting because we're going to see certain parts of the economy where we see inflation continuing to, to uh, rage out of control, energy, food, for example. But in other areas, we're going to see deflation. It's going to be a very interesting time. And, and this is why I say you got to be raising capital right now. You've got to be uh, building up that war chest because you're going to see big discounts and there are going to be huge sales coming. At some point, high prices in this economy are going to destroy demand. And we're going to see this take place in housing. So we see it in used cars. Uh, now uh, sales are plunging because of the high prices. People are not willing, at some point they're tapped out, they're just not willing to do it. And we're gonna see this also occur in the housing market. The high price in housing is going uh, to kill off demand. And that's why I believe we're gonna see huge corrections uh, in home prices. And I think that's about 60 to 90 days away before we begin to really see uh, significant changes in prices. Another article today on CNBC, mortgage demand falls even further as rates shoot back up to July highs. The average interest rate for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage with conforming loan balance increased to 5.8% last week. Mortgage applications dropped 2% for the week and were 23% lower than the same week one year ago. Refis down 30% from a week ago, and they're down around 70% from a year ago. Uh, anybody in the mortgage business, I hope you saved your money because it is going to be a very bumpy ride for multiple years in the mortgage industry and in the real estate industry. Um, we are going to see a lot of destruction. And just think how much of this economy is connected to real estate, from builders to plumbers to electricians to roofers to all the companies that make the materials, uh, down to Home Depot and Lowe's to the landscaper to the pool builders to the architects to the truck drivers to the heavy equipment operators, etc. This is going to slow all of these industries down. The hedge today, this is a game. What comes next is not pretty. The market, the average investor, the average American are all ill-prepared for what is about to happen and the kind of instability uh, that is about to hit. Recession, stagflation, geopolitic, uh, ge geopolitics, uh, domestic politics, energy, food, inflation. It's not the things that you see coming it's the things you don't see coming. So you have to ask yourself right now, how prepared are you? And I'm talking to you, you. Right now, the best advice I can give anybody is just get prepared. Make sure that you're covering all your bases. Make sure you have a little extra food put away, extra water, some extra cash put away. Most people who've been, say, working over the last 10 or 15 years, don't remember the dot-com bubble. They don't remember what happened in 1987. They don't remember the 2008 crisis. And most of these people are completely ill-prepared and uninformed for what is about to happen. Probably 
that, that's probably half the workforce in the U.S. right now. Uh, these people were not around, uh, you know, back in 2008. They didn't see the housing crash. They don't understand anything other than these artificial markets that have been supported by quantitative easing and 0% interest rates. Now we are stepping into these aggressive rate hikes. The Fed now is supposed to be aggressively tightening by the end of September. And now financial conditions are tumbling while consumers and businesses face impossible budget calls. This storm, to me, is not going to resemble 2008, ladies and gentlemen. This storm is going to resemble 1929. I, I really, truly believe that. And, you know, I know people laughed at that a year ago, two years ago. Uh, but I don't think too many people are laughing now because they know that anything is possible. And now uh, people are, are beginning to get very scared of what Jerome Powell is doing and the repercussions these aggressive rate hikes can have, uh, the aggressive tightening as we get deeper into this recession, this can trigger a full-blown depression. Now, I don't think we have any other choice. Yeah, we, I guess we do have a choice. The Fed can pivot. The Fed can uh, start back uh, the printing presses and start quantitative easing again. But then we're going to have very, very, very serious problems, uh, problems that I don't think we could ever recover from. Our entire society has become so addicted to cheap dollars and easy credit that it has created a baller's mentality. Everybody's a big shot, especially when everybody was making over $1,000 a week with the benefits, the unemployment, people getting triple P money, buying Ferraris, buying Lambos. Uh, people were getting rich on cryptos, buying $100,000 Rolex watches, buying you know $4 million mansions in Miami. This baller mentality, this big shot mentality was all created with artificial money. And now uh, we're beginning to see a liquidity crisis. The money is drying up. All this free, easy money is drying up, and people now are going to pay a price. Ballers were spending money on distractions rather than facing reality. And I've been telling all of you, and you've been telling me, we've got to face reality. Uh, read the comments down below. If you want to see knowledge, uh, read, read real knowledge, absorb knowledge, go to the comments down below. I'm so happy that we have so many people who are awake and know what's happening and face reality. Because over the years, a lot of people didn't want to face reality. They didn't want the party to end. And these problems didn't just start a month ago, six months ago, a year ago. These problems arguably go all the way back to 2008, and you could argue even before 2008. We didn't fix things in 2008, and now we're going to deal with a real monster here. The most understandable thing about our society is that money makes it all happen. And now when the money dries up and the money isn't flowing and people aren't getting free money, it's going to be big problems. Paul's Jackson Hole nine-minute speech was the opposite of what everyone thought it would be. And I believe that Jerome Powell is going to continue to get aggressive. And I believe we're heading into a depression. The Fed has gone farther and faster than anyone thought it would do. And it is about to accelerate its plan. Get ready for high prices and millions of people out of work. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. The layoffs have begun. The liquidity crisis has begun. And the baller days are behind us. The free money is gone the credit cards are maxed out, the savings is wiped out, and things are about to get very, very real for millions of people. And if you just look at how much the average person has saved up, it's literally nothing. Half this country right now could not even pay for a $400 emergency. And the other half might have a couple thousand dollars saved up. Uh, people are ill-prepared because they ignored reality. They wanted to be ballers. They wanted to be big shots. They took the easy money. They spent it on things they didn't really need. Uh, they, had a, they had a party that lasted over a year. Smart people took that money, saved it, paid off their debt, and bought things that they really needed to prepare for what is coming.
cash savings, raising capital, buying some gold, buying some silver, buying some food, buying some water, uh, buying things that you would need if the lights went out, investing in themselves, branding themselves, uh, building a skill set for themselves, uh, just making themselves a better, stronger person instead of going out and buying a car and financing it for a thousand dollars a month, which a lot of people did uh, while they didn't pay their rent, why they didn't, while they didn't pay their mortgages, and here we are. Uh, it is about time to pay the piper, ladies and gentlemen. And people got duped and suckered in to this free money. And uh, now they're going to pay an enormous price. And really, the country is going to pay a severe price for all of this. While a very few at the top are going to capitalize and buy houses on sale and apartment buildings on sale and farms on sale and land on sale and cars on sale. And if you're your own central bank right now and you've been preparing, you're going to do the same thing. But very, very few people are going to have the opportunity and the resources to take advantage of what's about to happen because they partied their money away. They partied their time away. They partied reality away. They didn't want to listen. They didn't want to face reality. They wanted to ignore it. They didn't want to believe. They didn't want to hear anything negative. You know, these people, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to go along with it. Um, it's out of my hands. So I'm just going to enjoy every day that I have until something happens. Well, these will be the people knocking at your door because they're going to need somewhere to sleep, somewhere to eat, some, somewhere, somebody to protect them. They're going to need you to give them some money because these people ignored reality. I'm going to leave it there today. Uh, these markets are in big trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Not to say they can't go up 500 tomorrow, but I don't think we're ever going to see the highs that we ever saw. And Whatever happens in the stock market, I don't really care, to be honest with you. I'm really watching now what's happening in the bond market and what's happening in the economy because that's where the damage is really going to be done. But we're going to see big damage in the stock market. People ask me, why do I even care what's happening in the stock market? Well, I'll tell you why. Because so many people, trillions of dollars uh, are invested, uh, retail investors, pensions, uh, people invested in hedge funds. Uh, you have uh, bondholders in commercial real estate, uh, et cetera. But we, we have a lot of people, businesses and pensions invested in the stock market. And when it blows up, and it's going to, uh, we're going to see massive fallout economically and socially right here in America. So that's why I care about it. I know it's a fraud. I know it's a giant bubble. And I know it's going to pop. And you do too. But uh, I'm not in it. I'm completely out of it. But it is going to affect all of us, and I realize that. It is going to affect all of us because one way or another, most people are connected to the stock market. So your 401ks, your pensions, your retirements, um, people you work for, it's all tied into the stock market. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, unbelievable what we're seeing. It really, really is. And it's very, very scary and concerning uh, with what is happening. And I've noticed that now all these people who said that, you know, oh, you're wrong, buy crypto. They've disappeared. All the dip buyers, oh, get into these markets. They're all disappearing now too. And they're going to continue to disappear and disappear and disappear. The best thing you can do now is hold real things, ladies and gentlemen, things you can get to. God bless. Talk to all of you soon.